Okay, let me just clarify first. Do you process. believe Allah is the best of deceivers or best of planners? I have no problem taking the deceiver as well. Okay, no <laughs> so 114 surahs involve a, a verse that has been created or changed. Now that's a big chunk of the Quran for God to keep changing his mind that many times. Was the mosque there? Was it a spiritual mosque? Was he in his bed? Was he not in his bed? We, there's, two, there's a lot of questions that don't oh, seem to add up. I'm saying he, there were people who were not deceived. Which people? They, they, like I give you an example of Ibnais. The Ibnais. Ibnais. According to the Quran, are those, a, are those the true Christians? guide you more if you think you're already guided of course and well, I, I really like and i hope every other christian or even muslim sometimes behave differently as yeah. well they behave the way you behave well and, 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 and it's, very, it's really nice and the same for you I, we yeah. hope god yeah. will guide you to absolutely to and the I, truth. at the end of the day we are, we are seeking for the truth of course and, and we need to be sincere about it yes so but, yeah no problem i mean but I, 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 yeah to say that. i mean even I though did, i disagree with you on something yeah. yeah i mean i did listen to some of your debates with cp and i did yeah, feel yeah. like yeah well he banned me he banned me four <laughs> times well but <laughs> he, blocked me. he just unbanned me uh, yesterday yeah. unblocked me yesterday i called him but then he it was like midnight and i went to bed i'm going to call him like tomorrow <laughs> but cp is a very difficult person to speak to not only that he has knowledge he has a lot of knowledge but he won't give anybody a chance to explain this off and this is my experience with him Okay, so so basically, what I was doing um, at home, I was just doing a bit of um, research into um, when I look at the life of the prophet. Yes, I look, look to see whether his life is consistent with, let's say, who, who I oh, what I'm no. taught to be a true prophet, yes. or someone that is um, necessarily acting as a prophet, but they're not a true prophet. So we can call them like a charlatan or false prophet. Yes. And what, one of the things I came across, which was quite interesting, it's called um, psychological narrative analysis. So basically what this is, is um, where it's a, it's a technique F, the FBI use, and it's when they try and find out whether someone's a liar. Yes. So they, it might be the study of speech or the behavior to kind of see whether they find irregularities yeah. to, you know, it's like if someone's lying, they might look around or mm. their statements are inconsistent or contradict their exactly yeah, yeah so so these are what some of the things that i felt were contradictions within let's say the hadith and the quran uh, and how muslims will try and reconcile these things so for example but before you carry on i just want to say i'm i'm, I'm one of those muslims yes i do not believe every hadith okay uh, i'm i'm myself a skeptic about some hadith yes. okay but I, my, my complete faith is on the Quran. Okay. Quran, without any doubt, is the word of God, without any errors, without any contradiction. The hadith, we can find, contradict, even Sahih hadith, okay. contradict with each other. So okay. they both can't be right. Yes. So I am, um, like Shabir Ali, probably you know Shabir Ali. Yeah. I am kind of thinking on in his lines. Okay. So if you show me some hadith contradicting with the Quran, I'm going to go with the Quran. Okay. So I just want to tell you in advance, this is going to be my stance on it. Okay. Because you mentioned hadith contradicting the Quran, so I'm going to leave the hadith anything contradict with the Quran, I'm going to leave it. Okay, so for example, one of the first things um, I looked at uh, is that I've noticed is that in the Quran a lot of revelations come after the fact because a prophet by definition is someone who speaks before the event, mm -hmm. whereas within the Quran we see a lot of um, revelations coming after the event has happened after the event happened. yes okay. for example um so for example so if i go to uh 16 101 yeah. sorry so 2 2 106 2 106 yeah so alice says whatever communications we abrogate or cause to be forgotten we bring one better that than it or like it do you not know that Allah has the power of, of, over all things? Mm -hmm. Now the first question I would ask is how can an all-knowing God create something better than what was originally there? Because an all-knowing God would know better in the first place. So you, a God technically can't replace something with something better. Well, it, it can have a different interpretation. It could be better for you 
at that particular time. Not necessarily better as the word of God. Something is better for you today, it might not be better for you a year later. So for our guidance, that verse is better than the verse previously. That was in the past. So you could interpret that as well. But some scholars also say that. It also means Torah, Injil, all they are uh, revelations of God. Yes. So Quran came after that. The Quran abrogate what was in the Torah okay. and what was in the Injil. It doesn't necessarily mean about the Quran. This verse is not necessarily talking about the Quran. It's talking about our revelations. And Torah, Injil, and Zabur all was for Allah's revelation. And we believe Quran came is better word than the, the uh, in, in it for the guidance of people than those revelations. So Allah abrogate what was in the Torah and Injil. Well, why in, are you implying it's, it's about talking about the Quran? Well, because in um, there's a scholar called Abu Jafar al Nakas, and he's got I think his book's called Al Nikswal Man. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mansuk, I don't yeah. know how he's, okay. but basically in his analysis he says out of the 114 surahs 71 of them which is 60, 62% involve some sort of verse that has been changed or deleted or abrogated so 70, 62% of the uh, 614 surahs involve a, a verse that has been abrogated or changed now that's a big chunk of the Quran for God to keep changing his mind that many times or bring in something better so initially this is why when we look at this is why when we look in the Torah that they were given the laws of Moses which lasted all the way even though you believe until the uh, prophet prophet's time there wasn't verses that were abrogated and changed backwards and forth yes you did say that Torah and the Injil and then the like a progressive revelation even though that's not what we believe but let's go with your argument but, but but I, I got it uh, Maududi's interpretation okay can I read it yes but, um, the same verse that's the verse you're talking about yeah yeah chapter 2 verse 106 yeah okay and it says better we bring a better one or the like of it yes now interpretation says this is in response to a doubt which the Jews tried to implant in the minds of the Muslims yes if both the earlier scriptures and the Quran were revelations from God why was it they asked that the injections found in the earlier scriptures had been replaced by new ones in the Quran? Okay. How could the same God issue divergent injections? So it was Jews complaining to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why Quran brings something different or new? So this verse came in their response. This is Maududi's translation. I'm talking about Maududi here, one of the best, um, uh, what do you call it, um, interpreters, of uh, Mufassir of the last century, you know that. And the one guy you quoting it, I, nobody knows who that person is. Can you repeat the name again? Of the one. No, no, that was an interpretation. This is a, no, but a, this an, is the book. Some book. Yeah. Analogy of one person wrote a book who is not a very well-known scholar or classical scholar. No. Madhudi is the last century's uh, best mufassir of uh, of the Quran, mm -hmm. and he is talking about the Jews. This is this verse came in the response to the Jews. Why your Quran is different than our scripture? So this is Allah's, Allah saying, this is what it says, for whatever verse we might abrogate, so you have straight away... Exactly, verse from where though? So the, the, the revelations before had a verses, isn't it? But then within the Quran verses... You know verses, verse, verse actually mean? Yeah, but, in then, Arabic. but then within the Quran verses are abrogated as well. Verse mean ayah. Yes. Yeah, or ayah also another meaning, yes. means sign. Yes. So ayahs and signs came before as well, the Jews and... Yes. So this one came to abrogate what was before and uh, you're right, how come Allah's words can be better than the words later on? Yes. But in the situation, some situation, that word is better than the, than the words before. Not that they surpass Allah's, Allah's eloquence or in any way. But for us, it's better this verse in this situation than in the past. Okay. So this this is the also an interpretation, but you are somehow implying it has to be one strict understanding. Well, of course. I mean, if you have a divine book, let's say within the book itself, because in the Quran, there are verses that abrogate another verse. So even for the Muslims. You have an example? Okay. So because it's yeah, better, I'll give you an example. Well, this, example this will, so this will be... That through uh, the hadith. Do you, do you understand this one? Chapter 2 verse 106. It's another well, side of well, the I'll, understanding as well. I'll clarify my statement. I understand your point, but then I'll d dive up, delve into more as to why it's in regard to the Quran. So I'll bring up a hadith for you. 
because what we notice within the Quran, and as I said, Allah, you, it seems like Allah changed his mind a lot of the time. And I'll give you an example. So it's coming from if, a Christian. So if we go to uh, Old Testament, the New Testament is completely changed. Well, we can discuss that next week. Okay. But if we go to 16101, and when we exchange a verse in place of another verse, and Allah knows very well what He is sending down, they say. And this is uh, from Bukhari. So I'll just show you. Uh, Bukhari. Yeah. So it says, Narrated al Bara. There was revealed, not equal are those believers who sit at home and those who strive and fight in the cause of Allah. So that's 495. Mm. Quran 495. Mm. And it says, The Prophet said, Call Zaid for me and let him bring the board and the ink pot and the scapula bone or the scapula bone and ink pot then he said right not equal are those believers who sit and at the time Amir bin Ummaktum the blind man was sitting behind the prophet he said O oh, Allah's apostle what is your order for me as regards to the above verse as I am a blind man so instead of the above verse the following verse was revealed not equal are those believers who sit at home except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame and those who strive and fight in the cause of Allah. This is 495? Yes. So, yeah, so what this hadith... Same, same verse. Yes. So same verse. So what, Ali, so what this hadith is saying, Muhammad is in a room of people, yeah. packed room. Yeah. He reveals it, gets a revelation about the conditions of jihad. He says everyone should engage in jihad. Then there's a blind man sitting behind him and then he confronts Muhammad and says, what about me? Then for some miraculous reason, Muhammad reveals and gets another divine revelation yeah. to make an exception for blind people or disabled people. But if Allah is all-knowing, shouldn't he have revealed the second verse the first time with the exception not of knowing that this person was in the room? Because what we see, if we use our intellect, is this would be more in line with someone who is Allah and Muhammad at the same time revealing what he sees but not realizing there's someone behind him who's blind and then a the person is asked him what about me and then a new revelation from Allah but if Allah is all-knowing he should have just said the second verse the better verse the first time rather than reading it's the same it words isn't it yeah it's the same words it's the second word yeah so it got abrogated A addition it, yeah in the same words yes. added so oh. you, you will only find the second one in the quran can i read the whole verse if you don't mind yeah, yeah, yeah. 495 because you Just read hadith in the middle yeah because yeah. obviously the hadith shortens it so so four verse 95 yes yeah, 495. 95. those believers who sit at home unless they do so out of disability yes injury are not the equals of those who strive in the way of Allah with their possessions and their lives. Allah has exalted in rank. But but the verse you say is the, the verse you read in the hadith yes. is not there. Yeah. So basically it was initially revealed no, there was no account for blind and disabled people. There was no exception. So then the blind man said what about me? So then it's the verse was revealed can again. You read, because I don't have that. Can you read the part which is abrogated? Read that part, the one revealed first. Because what I got in the Quran yes. is the second part you're talking about. Yes, yeah, so the first one. So obviously, as you can see in the hadith, I didn't even bring my glasses. I can't read it. <laughs> okay. So they don't they don't recite the whole verse. Just no, no. They, what was the verse? Just read the. So line. it says, "Not equal are those believers who sit." Dot dot dot. So that, that's the beginning of the verse. And then it says, so instead of the above verse, the following verse was revealed. Not equal are those believers who sit at home, except those who are disabled by injury or blind or lame, and those who strive in the fight of Allah. So obviously, if you go into other like authentic hadiths, it will probably detail the verse. And this is the authentic hadith, isn't it? Yes, Bukhari. What's the number? This is Bukhari, book 66, hadith 12. Hadith 12? Yeah. 
you have uh, any phone number of these? What's four, 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 nine, four nine, nine, nine zero. Okay, four nine nine zero. Okay. Party must be Hadith Sahih. Yes. Okay, this is the one, isn't it? Yes. So this is Sahih Hadith now. Yes. Because as we know, the word Prophet means the one who speaks before. Yeah. So they're always a prophet. Ask a Jew. A prophet will always speak so for your the point event. here is yes. how come okay man can make a mistake, a prophet wouldn't realize this is a blind air. But, but God wouldn't God exactly. would know that. Yes. You think there could be a wisdom here? The God when real something, God wants people to make their point. There's some wisdom that if we learn from it, like if the blind man came up and just made his point. Okay. Like I'm a blind man. So there's some wisdom God is teaching us that if, go, if something comes, you can always say something about it. You can always not criticize, but you can always make a point if you find something. But then isn't that the point of a prophet to and the, that's what convinced people about God that like a prophet would say something and people would be shocked at the revelation. You know, if he said that and a blind man was behind him and said, wow, he knew I was blind and I was behind him. But when he stands up and says, what about me? It kind of seems that this behavior is consistent with someone who didn't know there was a blind man behind him. Because that's why when I started this, I said about like, when we have like forensic analysis of people's behavior, we look at things that are either consistent with what we know as a true prophet or someone that might be a charlatan, someone acting in the place. What, what, if someone wasn't a true prophet, what behavior would we see and i don't think if you ask anyone this would be an example of a verse where they would not tick their pro true prophet box they'll tick questionable box can you, you make another point because i want to make a, a statement i, I yeah. want to kind of a bring my point of view as a okay. muslim make whatever another point okay this is a good point okay yeah this is a point here showing like there's somebody making it up as it suits yeah that's okay. your point yeah. But I got something else in the back of my mind, but I'm going to bring it once I hear all your evidence. Okay. Because um, basically it was a questionnaire that I, I was looking at. So it's a basically a questionnaire, looks at the criteria. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it says, question four they put, state, or statement four, they say, the person keeps it short and vague. The longer, more complete and spelled out story is, the more likely to be true. Again, telling a lie or a string of lies takes more effort because it means that you have to create an entire scenario out of your head. Brevity may be the soul of wit, but it is also the soul of a lie. Now, if we go to um, Quran 3.7, it is he who has sent down to you the book. In it are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and the others unspecific. As for those in which the heart is deviation, they will follow that which is unspecific, seeking discord and seeking an interpretation. Mm. And no one knows its interpretation except Allah. Mm. But those in firm knowledge say, we believe in it, all of it is from our Lord, and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. Yeah. So my thing would be, because in, in the Quran, we clearly see that it talks about the Quran is clear and in detail, uh, like, they'll be clear and specific There's verses. Context for that. Okay, because my, my thing would be this. clear for, for our guidance. Okay, my thing would be biggest thing in Christianity. Let, let me start quick, first quickly with the book of Moses. Moses was given a revelation from God, so he talked about the, all the prophets like Moses, Noah, so Abraham, Noah, all the people before him in clear detail. Right now, we get Muhammad. What happened on the day of the crucifixion? Because all the Quran says is that it was made to appear like them and it was not so. Now according to this criteria, that is brevity. I would I would expect from a God to say, actually, this is what happened on the day in detail. Maybe someone, even archaeologists, goes and digs something, finds something that says, wow, this is a true revelation from God. You know, because um, if, if, we have to think, if you're a liar, could you go into detail about something that happened 600 years before you if you want to, uh, you know, object it? Because obviously for Christians, our core, the, our core faith depends on the death and resurrection of Christ. So this is what, one of the things we hold in high esteem. So if someone comes along and says it was made to appear as them and it wasn't, 
how do you interpret that? Like you what? You're yeah. about crucifixion here? Oh yeah. Like what's you your want, understanding okay. of the crucifixion? Look, if, as a Muslim, when I we have evidence in the Quran which yeah. told us, tells us it cannot be Jesus. Now come to that. But okay. before we read the Bible, in the Bible we read John 11, where Jesus went to raise Lazarus. Okay. Yeah. Before he raised Lazarus, he look up in the sky. And he says, God, I know you always hear me. Yes. I'm only saying this so they understand. Yes. yes. So what I understand here, understand that from this verse, hear means whenever I ask you, you accept it. Okay. Whenever I ask you anything, you accept it. Because here it cannot be talking about the physical hearing. Okay. Because God hears everybody. He's om omnipresent. Yeah. Okay. So when Jesus says you always hear me, then we go to book of Hebrews. Chapter yes. 5 verse 7, it says in the days of his flesh, he used to pray to the God who could have saved him from death. Yes. And he was heard. The book of Hebrews says he was heard. If you put two and two together, Jesus wants to be saved and God hears his prayer. So Jesus, according to that, he was saved because he said, you always hear me. Then I compare that with the Quran. The Quranic verse clearly saying, it was not him that yes. appeared to them. Yes. So Quran. then who was on the cross? Exactly. I'm going to tell you who was okay. on the cross. Basically, Quran is saying that it appeared to them, meaning he wasn't him. Now if you go to chapter 5, yeah, okay. verse 11, 111 to 115, I'm going to read it to you. Now, there is the indication who that person was on the cross. Okay. And many interpreters did say that it was Judas Iscariot. And this verse, three, four verses shows us it is one of his disciples and the one who betrayed him. I'm going to read it to you. I want you to pay attention on that. It's four verses. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 111, I'm going to read. I revealed to the disciples to believe in me and in my messenger. They said, we do believe and we bear witness that we indeed are the ones who submit to Allah. Next verse says, also recall when the disciples asked Jesus, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, has your Lord the power to send down to us a repast from heaven, a table full of food from okay. heaven. This verse is Maida, which means table full of food. You know? Okay. So this verse is talking about. So, so where does it mention Judas? I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come to that. Okay. I'm going to come to that. Now you need to understand what is the whole story is. So the disciples asked Jesus, "Can you ask God to send us food from heaven?" Thereupon Jesus said, "Fear Allah, if you do indeed have faith." They said. We desire to partake of it. The translation is not very good, but I can, I, if you don't understand, I can explain that to you. Uh, they said, we desire to partake of it, that our hearts be satisfied, and we know that you did speak the truth to us, and that we are its witnesses. Jesus, son of Mary, then prayed. So they say, because our hearts are not as strong in the faith, if we see this miracle, our faith becomes stronger. Jesus, son of Mary, then prayed, O oh Allah, our Lord, send down to us a food from heaven that shall be a festival for the first of us and for the last of us, and a sign from you, and provide us with sustenance, for you are the best provider of sustenance. You're following the story, right? Okay. Now the next verse is a very important one. Allah said, I shall indeed send it down to you. Mm -hmm. Then I shall afflict whoever among you who disbelieves with a chastisement wherever, wherewith I will afflict none in the world. So Allah say, okay, okay. I will send us the food. And remember this is talking about his personal private disciples, okay. close disciples. It's not talking about the whole uh, masses. It's talking about close disciples. Okay. So Allah say, okay, I'll send it down. But after seeing this sign, any among, um, one among you turn back from faith, I will punish him with a punishment and never punish anybody in the world. Okay. This punishment is going to be unique punishment. Okay. Now, in Islam, we are allowed to take from other scriptures which as long as it does not contradict us. So we go to the Bible and we learn there's one disciple of Jesus who betrayed him and his name was Judas Iscariot. Okay. So what was his punishment mm -hmm. according to Bible? His punishment was that he hung himself. Yes. 
-hmm. So according to Islam, if one disciple betrayed him, yeah. he hung himself, that's not a unique punishment. Okay. So we in Islam, we believe the one who uh, betrayed him, God punished him and his punishment was what he wanted for Jesus. Okay. He wanted Jesus to be on the cross. So God replaced him and this is not me saying that. Okay. There's a Mufassir Tafasir is okay. also saying that. Some say the Simon Cyrene. Some say it's Judas Iscariot. So let me So this verse is telling us what happened to the person who betrayed Jesus. Jesus. Okay. So let me respond so, to that. So this is my understanding okay. that it was Judas Iscariot. So now, not our so now you said obviously you appeal to Jesus praying to the Father to take the cup from him or to, to rescue him. But then when we go into Matthew, the book of Matthew 17, 23, or we start at 22, it says, As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hand of men and they will kill him and he will be raised on the third day. They were greatly distressed. Mm -hmm. So Jesus prophesied before right. that they would kill him and he would be raised on the third day. If we go to the book of John, John 2. I'm not denying that, there are no verses there. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will rise it up. So yeah. it, when, even when he was praying to the Father, Jesus knew what would happen, he was going to die. But I want to just dwell on this point about Judas being on the cross. So now, we know Christians, we believe that Jesus was crucified and he was resurrected. This is what Paul preached as well. So my question would then be, if Allah in the Quran says we are politics because we make associate partners with him, in the face of Jesus on Judas Allah has then deceived the Christians for 600 years because there was not one person that said to the Christians actually this was not Jesus on the cross they saw what they believed was Jesus so then who's deceived the Christians and the followers of Christ was it Satan Paul or Allah it was not Allah it was a Satan of course because Allah but did Satan put the appearance of Jesus on Judas, no, no. according to your no, definition. No, it was Allah punished Judas. Yes. Yes. But Allah didn't deceive anybody. So well, who did they see on if, the cross? If Allah wanted to save his prophet, okay. no matter whatever scenario you put, okay. the Satan will do something with people to deceive them. For example, you give me any scenario to save Jesus. How you... Uh, but you agree how, that the appearance, of the appearance of Jesus was put on Judas? That's right, yeah. yeah. So then... God, puni God punished him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so punishment. then if the appearance of Judas was put on Jesus, I'm a first century Jew looking at someone on the cross. I believe it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm going to believe Jesus has died. And if I see him ascend to heaven, I'm also going to believe he's resurrected. So therefore, this would not be in a merciful act from Allah because the people God are punishing seen, God punishing Judas. Yes, because there's, who was the, who, who done the crime? Because if who, Jesus who was is, guilty of because the crime. if Jesus's parents was put on him, yeah. The Jews, his mother, his disciples, everyone would, would be weeping, thinking Jesus has been crucified. Then they see him ascend. Paul comes then preaching the same thing. Jesus has been crucified and resurrected because Jesus said he's going to die and be raised up in three days. So I'm asking you, if they saw the image of Jesus on the cross, they saw, let's say, if it's Judas, let me just finish my point. If it's Judas who died, who had the appearance of Jesus, then the, the followers and Christianity and let's say, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of Christians between that 600 years have all been deceived. Because you, if Allah has, if Muhammad has come 600 years later to correct it, what salvation was for these people? Because they've now associated a partner with Allah believing Jesus was God based on this very death and crucifixion. Because remember, Paul says the, the main aspect of the Christian faith is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can I answer? Can I answer that? Yeah. Uh, my, my, my answer. My, my answer. My answer. Another one second. First, my, my answer. The, the resurrection is from the dead. My answer to that. Is, my answer to that is first of all, God yes. punished Judas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. God punished Judas. Now, you implying since Jesus on the cross died, yes. that means he has to be God. He has to be dying for the sins of the world. Let me answer it. He's, he has to be since he died on the cross. He is dying for the sins of the world. Jews didn't, Jews didn't understood like that. Jews, those who killed him on the cross, supposedly, 
They killed him precisely to prove that he cannot be Messiah. Be become Messiah, the one who hung on the tree. Because he's a bit loud. Okay. The Jews, they precise, their point was to kill him on the cross was because the, the, the one who hung on the tree Yes. It's the cursed one, yes. yes? And Messiah cannot be the cursed one. That was their understanding was. So those who saw him die, they said, you see, he was a fake man. He was not Messiah. It was later on. Later on, uh, the people like Paul, they come up, they're writing. But was they lying when he said Jesus was died and was resurrected? Because as we saw, that's what people would have believed. No, no, that's what I'm coming to. Yes. The Paul, he was deceived by whoever. By, well, but he but could only be deceived by what the people had seen. Well, we don't believe Paul was the apostle of God. Yeah, but you said Paul was deceived. So that if Paul is deceived, it's based on an assumption that someone has seen this, this Jesus. This is why I said in the beginning, you give me one scenario yes. how God, yes. if the yes. for example, yes. grant me, the God wanted to save Jesus. Yes. Give me a scenario yes. that what was the best scenario to save Jesus from that death. Yeah, but give me any. No, I'm, but you, I'm you're, telling you're not answering my no, question no, though I, because I, I'm asking you. I'm telling you. If, if yeah. Allah is, has full knowledge, he knows once he puts that appearance on, Ju uh, on Judas yeah. that these Christians are going to come along and believe in this deceit. Because I'm asking you, who corrected these people from their not their their, their belief that Jesus was crucified until 600 years later? In Islam, we do not have details what happened to after some people. Yes, okay. What whatever details we find in the Bible, but Bible did say Jesus came back. But then, would that be an act of a merciful God? That, the Bible did say Jesus came back to meet his disciples and told them, "Look, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened to me. I'm good. Resurrected and all that." So we said, "There's a story get muddled there." The story got muddled there. Jesus probably came back. Maybe angels came back and told people that Jesus was resurrected. Yes. Oh, not resurrected. He's alive. He's but not on the cross. He's not on the cross. So they were there as a peace and solace. And we do not follow the the narrative of the Bible. We believe God have guided. So you've just said you've picked and chooses yeah. now oh, because you you, yeah. you know why you like to quote Hebrews. I tell and you, I tell you. Now <laughs> the other bits you want to no, push but, aside. But, but, but you didn't you didn't address <laughs> Hebrews. When, when yeah. I say Hebrews, yes. When you say Matthew, according to Matthew, he says, oh. I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to die the on the cross. The Son of Man will be killed yeah. and raised. But that's, that was the point. It's a contradiction then. Because in, in according to Hebrew, he was heard. Yes. And what heard means here? Heard means he was, his prayer was accepted. And what was his prayer? He wanted to be saved. So there's a contradiction in the Bible there. That, so, that's, that's another point. No, that is the main no, no, That, is the that main can point. be addressed. But we're, if you're trying to divert about yes, the I'm whole... Because I remember, I ask you. This is why I'm picking and choosing because this so Bible is full of contradictions. Because I don't want to go on a tangent, but I, I'm saying the Quran, no, Quran, Quran, Quran is a criterion. I'm saying I'm going by your your explanation. Judas was on the cross, and Jesus' appearance was put on him. That's right. So all the followers, thousands and thousands of followers. There's hardly anybody there. Well, Christianity has grown. But hardly anybody saw him. So hardly Chris, any of his disciples were there. Yeah, Christianity, people, one disciple Christianity has about grown from the, from the testimony of the eyewitnesses. So that means his mother and Mandalay, everyone else. John, yeah, and the whole Roman him, Empire. They saw Jesus. But then, so now Allah has deceived the Christians as well. And because the Quran says there's nothing worse than a polytheist, someone who associates partners with Allah, right? That's right. So then, in Allah's foreknowledge, he knew Paul would come, spread the Gospels and everyone else, but that, yet he allowed this to happen. This doesn't sound like the best of planners because Allah says he's the best of planners. And a planner is someone who understands the outcomes of your actions. Deceiver. Because, but you, you, you contradict your God. Your God, no, no, your God. I'm, I'm, when, when no, no, I'm, I'm doing it based you on your like, definition. Because though. you're putting a lot of points now. I'm going to forget what the points okay, are. Let's do one by one. For example, I address the point that God has a foreknowledge. Yes. How he didn't see what's going to happen in the future. It's your God, when the flood of Noah came. But we're yeah, jumping. No. Let's stick on this one. The, 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 your God has foreknowledge. He regretted that he created human no, beings. That's why he but, killed them. You're, you're so, jumping. You're jumping. No, no, we're talking about We're talking about foreknowledge here. No, jump, no, God jumping. knows the future, but God guides the people. Yet, God also warned us that Satan's going to come and mislead you. So we believe that Satan came and he mislead people. Look, if Jesus died on the cross, 
Yeah? Something yes. If Jesus died on the cross. That doesn't mean he's God. Well, what makes him God is that he got resurrected. But my yeah, he, would be, he overcome yes, death. But my, That's but what God did make him God. Is, Dying on the cross doesn't is, make him yeah, God. But my question was, there many if, prophets my question died is, if Allah is the best of planners, because yeah. a planner is someone who understands the outcomes of your actions. Because people, if he is a deceiver, then he's deceived everyone. So should I, should I get you Allah say is the best of the planner, this is according to that verse. Okay, let me get you they the wanted to kill Jesus. Let me get you see it. They, they wanted to kill I Jesus. Know, they had a plan and Allah had a plan and Allah is the best of planner. Meaning, they wanted to kill his prophet. And Allah saved him and he put the guilty one on the cross. So they, his, okay. his plan let me give you succeeded. Let me give you the dictionary. That's what it means. Because do you believe Allah? Okay, let, let me just clarify. Deceiving you, the evil ones. Do, do, it's not Abbas. evil. It's not wrong. Okay, let me just clarify. Do you believe process. Allah is the best of deceivers or best of planners? I have no problem taking a deceiver as well. Okay. No <laughs> so because, so because in that word, okay, that's Allah, fine. No, at least he's you're honest, honest about yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. I don't Ma need Makaru, to go Makaru also means deceiver. But the point here is, who is he deceiving? He deceived what the Christians. Christians. No, he, he deceived, deceived the, evil. Christ, no. he deceived the evil ones who wanted to kill his prophet. And Christians. He deceived them. So what and about Christians. the people? So deceiving who the evil one is a good thing. But what about the people who witnessed the crucifixion who were deceived as well? Because they saw Jesus on the cross as well. So you didn't understand my point what I make. If Jesus died on the cross, yes. even if they saw, yes. which we believe was Judas Iscariot, yes. that doesn't make him God. What happened? That's, you thought you jumped yeah. that. What, what you're, happened? You're jump, I'm not, you're, that's, that's jumping. I'm saying. The very you, important point. You, you said who did he deceive? I said he deceived the Christians. No, he didn't deceive Christians. He did. But you just admitted that they saw him on the cross. He didn't deceive the Christians. He deceived the people. No, he punished the guy who wanted Jesus to be on the cross. Yeah. His disciple Judas Iscariot. God punished him to be like like Jesus on his his punishment, and he looked like him as well. Otherwise, why would they kill Judas? Well, the Christian faith is based on would, the fact that they saw someone of I Jesus on the cross. Why would they kill Dust. Judas then? Huh? Why would they kill Judas? They wanted to kill Jesus. So oh. then the Judas helped them and Judas become Jesus. Otherwise, if he didn't transform as Jesus, they wouldn't yes. kill him. Yes. So his punishment was he wanted punishment for Jesus. Yeah, and the so, Christians so, at that time saw Jesus on the cross. That's what our faith is based on. By the way, they so so we're, we're the children of the deceit because we hold on to the fact that Je some the early there were early Christians who saw Jesus on the cross. You're saying it was Judas, but I'm saying we're the legacy of those people who were deceived. So for thousands and thousands of years, we've, we've now been, uh, you know, no. believing in something that never happened. You so we're, are, we're, you we're are deceived, deceived well. by the writings of Paul, people like Paul. And look, okay, Quran, Quran never verified the resurrection of Jesus. But like that he got resurrected, he what, died what and he got resurrected. What were the writings of Paul? So his, Paul, his resurrection Paul and going Paul ascending to heaven, Paul. that makes you believe he's God. But Paul, Not wrote, on the cross. That he's, uh, Paul wrote that he got from um, Peter and James about the, the, the crucifixion, right? The story. Paul the got from? Yes, in Galatians. Peter uh, and sorry, James. In, um, in Corinthians, sorry. Crucifixion story. Yeah, let, what, what, what about a resurrection story? Let me read it to you. One what about Corinthians resurrection 15. story? Did he go uh, from James as well? I don't know. So he says, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you receive, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. So for here, Paul is saying that the, 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 the gospel is what he received and that would have been from Peter and James. So even scholars will agree that what he heard from here was something that Can I make goes a point close to the, Can I make a point there? To the, so Paul yeah. never met Jesus. Yeah, uh, that's going on a tangent. No, 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 it's not a tangent. We're, we're, no. talking about, we're talking about the... the, the oh, no, we were... The, yeah. Brother, Cause, cause we're, cause all I'm saying, because you're now going to say they I'm going to make Jesus. a very valid point here. Paul never met Jesus. Yes, in his lifetime. Yeah, he was not one of his disciples. James, his brother, yes. was his disciple. Right? Okay. So Paul says Jesus died. Yes. For our sins. Yes. Yes. Now show me in the book of James. Yeah. Book know. of James. Anywhere the James says that Jesus died for our sins. He now, said it. Now this is the no, thing. No, no. James. But the brother of James. But brother this of Jesus. But this is the thing. Why? 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 I'm not debating with This is the thing. Look. Because we're, we're going off in a tangent. No, what I'm saying to you. You say he got from what Peter I'm, and James. We're, go, we're, go, no, no, we're going no, on a tangent. No, no, this, this is very what I'm point. saying to you. You know what I'm trying to say here. Listen to what I'm saying. You say Listen. Paul learned from Peter and James that Jesus died for our sins. Now you show you, me anywhere you James' brother. You're, you're, you're jumping. Because look. Paul is lying. Listen. 
I'm saying blind. to you, even scholars will agree, every single scholar, even Bart Ehrman, they will say this, that's why I'm not going on a, being drawn into a Bart Ehrman what? He will say, and all scholars will say, sins. no, no, they'll say this first, Paul is confirming he got this creed, and the creed was given to him. That, not that he invented it's the creed. So, so this so is what? what? So what I'm saying Paul to you, what all the I'm time. saying to you, is that obviously through the Gospels we understand Jesus was died and he was resurrected. So I'm saying to you, bring it back to your point that it was Judas that was on the cross. So that's why I'm not trying to go on a tangent because the central thing is this: that everyone believed the Christian that it was Jesus who was on the cross. So if Allah had put the appearance of Judas on uh, Jesus and he's now deceived all the Christians and he's known in his foreknowledge that this will happen, that these people will start associating Godship with this person, where was the foreknowledge of God? Because this would sound like the worst plan in history, yeah. that he hates polytheists, mm. but he knew his actions would create these Christians yeah. that would believe in this. Yeah. This does not sound like a divine God. So you're God. saying all the Christians from the very beginning were the same, they believed was Sh all Show the me same. otherwise. No, no, what they were yes. Christians believe. What about Ebionites? What were they believe was? Ebionites. Ebionites. They believe. Were they not different than the Trinitarians? No, they believed. Um, let, yeah. let me. Uh, Ebionites has written the. What's it? What's it? The first Quran. No, no. I know. I know. I know. But Ebionites, they believed that you had to follow the law. They didn't believe. They didn't say Jesus wasn't the divine. Let me just find out. No, Ebionites. No, you know about the word we're talking about. I know. Uh, Dead Sea. I know, Dead sea but scrolls. let me just say. Just Dead Sea Scrolls. You know what Ebionites believe yes. about Paul? They believe yet to follow. You know what they said, said about Paul? That you, we're, we're jumping. No, no, no. This is very important. Because what we need about? to know what they, he they say, believed about Christ. He says about, they say about Paul was a wicked creature. Yeah, and about James, I know. About they said James was the te righteous uh, teacher of righteousness. And Paul, I'm repeating that again. Ebionites believe Paul was a wicked preacher. What do you have to say about that? But, 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 we're, but we're jumping huh? because we're. How does Allah refer to Paul? We're powder of lies, yes. We're, 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 no, no, also wicked preacher as well. We're, 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 we're jumping again the because we're asking, the, we're, 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 we're asking wicked. about. Stick on that topic. Yeah, we're, we're asking about. He's Ebionite. Because as I've said, we have to look at the characteristics of this God. So obviously I gave you the first incident about the blind no, man. Now we're jumping, going on to Jesus. No, but That's I answer your question. God deceived everybody. I'm saying he, there were people who were not deceived. Which people? They, they, like I give you an example of Ebionites. The Ebionites. E e e According to the Quran, are those, are those, are those the true Christians? Quran, I told you, Quran Do you doesn't, believe that Ebionites Quran, are the no, true Quran didn't, so then, so then they're Quran heretics, did so not give you an explanation. To a church that hasn't been born yet. Quran didn't give you explanation well, you of can. all the people. If you deny no, the no, divinity no, no, no. of Christ, the Roman Catholic but I'm Church to no. call Ebionites Quran didn't uh, give you explanation heretics. Of all. So Before again, the Quran heretics, says Christians they? should follow the gospel. Answer. Who were the Christians in the Quran? They bring the word. I'll, I'll just you after, 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 after I finish with him. Bring the word. I'm going to explain the Have you heard it before? So anyway. Look, I'm going to make my final yeah. statement because okay. I have to go as well. All right, I'm pray. Right. If you want to have a proper debate with yes. me on subtopic, we can have a proper okay. debate. I like to have a debate with the Christians, justice in Islam and, and uh, uh, not Islam and Christianity. I wouldn't sure? say Christianity because I'm going to bring the whole Bible in this. Sure? <laughs> yeah, Quran okay. and Bible, the justice, which book reads justice. I want to have a debate with you. If you want to have a debate on that next week, we do that. But I'm, I want to conclude on that. Okay. That one place we have a Quran yes. and one we have a Bible. Okay. As a Muslim, I, have, I also read Bible as well. Okay. I see Bible has a lot of applications, errors, contradictions, interpolations. Okay. On the contrary, yeah. Uh, uh, Quran doesn't have any of them. Okay. So which one do so, I believe? Okay. Even there's one so, verse all right. telling Jesus didn't die. All right. I will follow something which is without which is any error and fabrication. Okay. So I'm this, gonna this I'm gonna ask logic. you one last question yeah. we'll just, to close off. In the Quran, yeah. it says Allah traveled to the furthest mosque. Yes. Allah name. Allah name. Uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. Sorry. Allah took he, Muhammad he, to the furthest. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the furthest mosque? Do you know what mosque means? No, no, where, where did he go? Where? Do you know what mosque means? No, no, no. Okay, where did he go? Mos you see, that, no, no. no, no. This is exactly the point here is. Where did he right. go? The mosque means something with masjid where people do sujood, where they prostrate. Okay. Yes. So the place of prostration. Okay. And we believe in Jerusalem, they once upon a time when David and Solomon okay. they built that place of yes. prostration where they used to worship. 
So that place was still there. Even there was nothing left there, but that was the place where they used to do prostration, prostrate. So they, Allah took him to Jerusalem, okay. where the people used to do prostration. But then, so that's the uh, mosque doesn't mean the building. But according this place would be masjid as well. We have to see for it. Yeah, let's, you let's, let's just look at what the um, the hadith say. About, I don't know what was the point that, you're making of because the hadith say that he went, he entered into the mosque and he conducted the prayer with Moses. Show and me. Isa, let Show me just get for you. Yeah, we'll Muslims, one, one. one problem I have with Muslims, they never refer to their tafsir, they never refer to their hadith. When you ask them a question from the Quran, they always use their mind okay. to explain without right referring to any, any, any It's on any camera, it's on camera. Any source. It's on camera. He say Muslims never go to tafsir. Okay. Yes. Go on, did you, did you went to tafsir when he Can you just be quiet? Let me make my point here, yeah? Go on. He says Muslims never go to tafsir. Yeah. It's on the camera here. You bring the worst. Yes. You did bring you, the worst. Where I went to tafsir. No, no, no. I went. No, no. no. Then I went to tafsir of Maududi. No, 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 no. no. Now I just oh, came. I just came. I didn't. I don't know why you are. How can you talk okay. to the illogical okay. people like that? He but say. Muslims just never. He said okay, Muslims never. Let, let me, I, I am let, the one who went to Tafsir. I'm going to go through some. I'm going to go through. You should think. You I'm, wait, let, I'm going to just quickly go through some of the hadith. So in Ibn Ishaq, right? Ibn Ishaq, right I'm going to just quickly go through some of the hadith. So in Ibn Ishaq, right? The, one of the earliest biographers. First of all, he said this. Yeah, but I'm going to go through. Yeah, but Ibn Ishaq is not. Yeah, but many of Muslims did them. But let me let me let me just. Read and then you can respond. We'll, we'll, always go to we'll the close on this source because we're going to the earliest account of the night journey. First, Ibn Ishaq he says, Um Abu Talib's daughter said, The apostle went on no journey except whilst he was in my house. He slept in my home that night after he prayed the final night prayer. And then just before dawn, he woke up saying, I went to Jerusalem. He got up to go out and I got hold of his robe and stayed there his belly. I pleaded, Oh Muhammad, don't tell the people for this, they will know you are lying and they will mock you. He said, by Allah, I will tell them, I told their rest name for my Muhammad. Mean, listen, what we see from the earliest account is that his, his, uh, the people close to him said that his body didn't even leave the bed. But then they were saying he somehow went to Jerusalem. Where else and how did he get there? Because the people who were seen saw, saw his body, they said that his body never left his bed. And I'll just go into another bit where he says. You didn't um, read the hadith. Just yeah, tell everybody. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm just you read the yeah, biography. That was biography. Ibn, and biography. Ibn, this is not completely authentic biography. Do you know that? Well, I'm saying the, the Muslims, earliest account. Muslim, the earliest account doesn't have to be the most authentic. Okay. For example. But yeah, let, let, for me, example, let me just finish. And um, let me just wrap up quickly. Yeah, because yeah, normally yeah. most historians will always go to the first account mm -hmm. because this is where you normally get the most genuine accurate accounts later but then what happens as we always find mm -hmm. legends always start to creep in later on later on that's why when we go to the earliest account I mean. that was, was not a legend so Ibn Ishaq was not a legend no no I'm listen to what I'm saying I'm saying now the earliest account because you're saying old they came and they corrected the mistakes maybe from Ibn Ishaq mm -hmm. but because I'm they saying, have more knowledge they find out more knowledge. In, they found more sources. Maybe they were more refined. Exactly. They, 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 their work was much more authentic than the others. Yeah. This, this is what we call adding, building a legend. Because if we go to Tabari and Ibn Ishaq, they both talk about, uh, you know, he, he didn't go anywhere. But then we now have this development of stories of where he was had a bodily flight. So, look, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is progressive. Yeah. Some person says something, the other person says, you know what, I'm going to see if his, yeah. his narration is right. So they work harder than the other person and they corrected it. It's, okay. It's possible. All right. Now, yes. we're talking about a now, life history of some human beings. Just, just to wrap up, because I'll go, because we should wrap up. So I'll go to the It says, it is narrated on the authority of Ibn Herrera that the messenger of Allah said, I found myself in Hijj and the Quraysh were asking me about my night journey. I was asked about the things pertaining to Beit El Maqdis, which could not, which I could not preserve in my mind. I was very vexed, so so vexed I had never seen before. Then Allah raised it before my eyes. I looked towards it, and I gave the information about whatever they questioned me. I also saw myself amongst a group of apostles. I saw Moses saying prayer, and I found him to be a well-built man, as if he was a man of the tribe of Shanu. Ah, I saw Jesus, son of Mary, offering prayer. 
All of the men he has the closest resemblance with Ua Masud Taraki. I saw Ibrahim offering prayer. He had the closest resemblance with your companion amongst people. When the time of prayer came, I led them. When I completed the prayer, someone said, here is Malik, the keeper of hell, pay him salutations. I turned to him, but he preceded me in situation. Where's so the point you say he entered? Or he yeah, saw? So, in the hadith, yeah, in the, in so, the mosque. Look, so, so basically, yeah, you know, so, so, say, yeah, so let me, you know what mosque yes. is, I so, told you, so the first, place of the Jews, so first what he's saying, is a lie. so what, so what yeah, he's saying, prove me a initially, mosque is a prove building. me, prove me a mosque, can I, yeah. let me finish, so what he's saying, is that, what he's saying is that, what he's saying is that he conducted a prayer with, with the, with the, with the previous prophets, and then when we go to Tabari, he said, I, wait, 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 because uh, they were asking him. You're confusing Wait, Hadith, yeah, Tabari, yeah. interpretation. Yeah, because and I'm just trying to wrap up very, very quickly. Yeah. You, you said you had to go. Otherwise, we can go into it next week. So basically, yeah. let me just summarize. So basically what he says, because he says he had a donk, um, Burak. He tied Burak onto the temple. And then he goes into the temple and conducts the prayer. Because they asked him, when the people didn't believe him, he also... Into the temple, is yeah. uh, In Hadith, no, wait, 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 So when... The, wait, let, let me respond yeah no don't bring words let me respond wait wait so the Quraysh were asking him what did the temple look like and he told them how many doors were on the temple so therefore a temple that doesn't exist cannot have doors so then they believed him so how can a temple that does not exist have doors I am really very confused reading hadith are you talking about the Tabu Tabari? Yeah. You're confusing so, many different biographies, see, Tabari, I, Hadith. Yeah. I want to address yeah, you because you say Hadith. Yeah. Is it so, a okay, do you, do you believe the night journey was physical or in the soul? Look, there are uh, two mm -hmm. different kinds of schools of what thought. Do mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. What do you believe? Schools of thought. They say the heaven journey is all spiritual experience. Yeah? Some people say it was a spiritual experience. In a spiritually, he went there okay. and then he went to the heaven and he met God. Okay. But there are some people mm -hmm. who believe it literally. Who believe they literally so happened. Which one do you think is correct? Okay. Yeah. So I am. I am. True. Can be believed. Okay. I am in that. I am 70% believe it was real. Real? Yes. Real life. Real. But 30% okay. I do have a. But then how is it that Ali? I do think this possible is a spiritual as well because okay. there are many people believe. So I am not. I have to be honest. I'm not final in that. that which one I, I believe? But 70% I believe the physical happened. Because there are hadiths which say the account. caravans will come. Let, let, let me give my own account. But then, example, let me just yeah. one, one second. But don't, okay. one second, yeah. You know, he slept and dreamt. When you dream, things can be real. Okay. For example, you can dream that you are in a, a house and you are eating. The food will be real. Everything will be real. The temple was destroyed, but in a dream, it could be real. That is there, rather than physical. Physical, then it's false because there was no temple. This is what I'm trying to say. If it's physical, he would have left. You the wife would have seen. For a first, of, uh, yeah? first of all, Quran didn't say about physical. Is physical so it's Quran, Quran didn't say that. Is it is the uh, Tabari? Yes, is Tabari. He, tabari said that. Yeah. Not, but so, not the Hadith didn't say that as well. So you are in agreement. Hadith, it's no, a dream. No, no. It's a dream, and it's the can, I, can, I, can, I, can I make my point? But we'll do a wrap up yeah, in a minute. Because you about bring so many things. Hadith and the Quran <laughs> did not say any temple was physical. Neither Hadith said, neither the Quran says. Not Tabari came along his interpretation. He could be right, he could be wrong. But we're talking about authenticity of the scriptures here. So it can still be physically happen because Hadith didn't say that. So, so Quran when say he went to the place of Sujood, Masjid, that means he went to place where the non prostration. But uh, whatever uh, you do, uh, prostration. Uh, quickly, the account from Tabari. So it says, after proclaiming that he had been to Jerusalem, Muhammad was allegedly asked to describe the temple. He said he is said to have replied, "I stood at Hajj, visualized Beit Al Maqdas, and described its signs." Some of them said, "How many doors are there in that mosque?" Mm -hmm. I had not counted them, so I began to look at it and counted them one by one and gave so them the information there was concerning no temple. them. Then so lie. therefore, we have to ask ourselves, what doors was he counting? If, as you said, there was no mosque, it's just a barren place, you know. Because what, yeah, for yeah, my intellect, yeah, what, there was no mosque. For my intellect, but for me, say, we must it also for, mean where you do sojourn. So yeah, why exactly. Is so, so it seems to me you that this is, the body, not but this is this seems to me that someone has made up an allegation of something spectacular happening and then 
he's made a mistake saying oh I counted the doors not realizing that temple doesn't exist anymore because how else would the people around there know they're in Arabia they're not going to know what's in Jerusalem exactly. but then when we now look as in a historical sense we know there was no temple after the 70 AD so because I asked initially started this conversation by saying let's look at the life of Muhammad we have a tick box for true prophet a, a tick box for things we would associate with someone we believe to be a charlatan unsubstantiable claims and this is what we keep seeing a God that seems to not have a divine knowledge that seems to make verses up post event yeah. rather than yeah. pre event yeah. this is what prophets were to do so obviously looking at this story of the night journey we see there's a lot of conjecture amongst Muslims about what happened you know why what is it bodily is it physical was the mosque there was it a spiritual mosque was he in his bed was he not in his bed we, there's two there's a lot of questions that don't oh. seem to add up okay so this is what well, i'm I presenting to do my to prayer as well and, okay. I, and i didn't come up prepared yeah, with this topic that's fine we can start from here next week okay. if you want to yeah, yeah. and i get I yeah. prepare yeah. myself but yeah, then yeah. we also address how bible that's right bible prophets as well not yeah, only yeah. The, yeah, Muhammad yeah. Muhammad yeah. Yeah. which biblical prophets and i can i can refute that, that's fine but what you just said in the end yeah that it looks like he made it up as people ask him a question so yeah. he's telling them he, they had doors and all that yeah. you basing your argument mm -hmm. not in the even the quran okay not in the sahih hadith okay. you basing your argument on the uh, narrative of tabari history tabari? of tabari is tabari? tabari one, is of, the one of the scholars historians. neither a prophet yes Neither an inspiration of God. Are you Tabari of is one of the brother. Why are you talking? Are you alright? No, I want to okay? know if you. Are you, are you not feeling very yes. secure or yeah. something like that? Just do your right. Whenever I talk, I'm asking. Seriously, yeah, don't worry. Well, He's going to do your question. Whenever I talk, he's there. But but yeah, don't worry. He do already you. posed questions. I'm answering. Yeah. You, what is this? Who's Tabari? Who's okay, Imam? Are you believing? Yeah. So yeah, do your do your So you are basing your accusation on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's making it up on the account of Tabari. Yeah. Not Sahih Hadith and the Quran. So my my criteria first is prim primary source is okay. Quran. Okay. Secondary source is Hadith. But then the yes. primary so source of the Quran says it was a vision. It doesn't say it's a vision. Okay. Next week we'll look at we'll look at it the verse. It doesn't say vision. Okay. He says, "Blessed be the, the God who took His servant mm -hmm. to the furthest mosque, mm -hmm. from the mosque to the furthest mosque." Yeah. Okay. It's not, not, not saying vision. We'll, we'll, we'll look at no that problem. next week. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's only fair that if you want to make a, your argument solid, yes. you bring Quran and Hadith. Yeah. The rest comes, they are not even secondary sources. Okay. They are they're further back, you know? Okay. You, you understand? So, this that's why I don't think you can say Muhammad was a liar or making up stories because Tabari says that. So, he, so you know, Sam, the argument is not strong. Well, I just to conclude, my argument would be this. You know history does not exist in a vacuum normally things will corroborate and that's why sometimes when you go to the agree, earliest sources yeah, yeah. this is why when we see the earliest islamic sources they they portray a very different muhammad than the ones in bukhari these sahih hadiths where now uh, miraculous things are being added onto him this is what we call legendary things but even the earliest independent stories about muhammad they didn't say he was a miraculous Okay, let's person. talk from here so, next week. So, we start from yeah. here. So this is where no we will look at next week. Look at more of the things in the Hadiths and okay. the Quran no to see whether the actions of Muhammad were consistent with a true prophet or a charlatan pretending to be a prophet. And that's why I showed with the three verses today. Uh, Alan not having full knowledge of the blind man in the room, which I don't think you adequately addressed. He said, yeah, it could have been revelation for us. We didn't really. Which one was that? The, the blind man yeah. asking for about jihad. You know, um, the, the, and obviously. The, what I wanted to say because I base my belief in the Quran the whole, as a whole. Yes. So when I analyzed Quran, I didn't find anything wrong, errors, okay. contradictions, anything. All right. And then you bring a hadith. Explains the revelation yeah, of the hadith. Verse. Yeah. Not the Quran. Yeah, but, but the Quran. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my my faith, my faith is in the Quran. That's okay. why. But but. Last point I want to say, you say, oh. actually next week I'm going to talk oh, about right. the next week because you believe yeah. David is a prophet, yeah? Well, 
He was a yes, minor yes, prophet. Yes, yes. Prophet. He'll be classified yeah. because he wrote the Psalms that had prophecies in it. Yeah. Therefore, okay, uh, no he can be a prophet. Someone can that So can we're going to talk about and what makes exactly. prophet, and then we but use the criteria of prophet according to the Bible as well. Yeah? That's fine. Okay, Let's no week. No problem. We'll do that. No problem. Thank you very much. So, so as we see with that debate, um, it was a very quick discussion, we can see how Abbas goes on a bit of tangents, but what we I was trying to establish is that if we have two tick, tick boxes, one for true prophet and one for false prophet, we will see the actions of Muhammad seem to fit the criteria of false prophet. Allah not having knowledge in advance of things. Even in Bukhari, the words, and then it was revealed, appear over 450 times. We've seen in the Quran, over 62% of the surahs involve some sort of abrogated verse. Is this something we associate with a divine, all-knowing God? You know, and Abbas, I don't. I think he was struggling with his explanations, especially the Jesus and the Judas on the cross. You know, he kept trying to go on a tangent. I didn't want to answer the question because we're going to go off topic. But I wanted to press, keep him on why would Allah, if he's the best of planners, deceive all the Christians for 600 years? And in the Quran, it says polytheism is the worst punishable crime so you know we'll continue this debate next week and see what answers abbas brings so until next week